G'day, this is Captain Uber, and this is Jewel 44 Magnums, a vanilla weapon that you can hold two of at one time. It works a little bit like the Juga pistols that we did a while back, but I reckon this works a little bit better. And you get two revolvers, so, you know, it's double the big iron. So what you'll see right here is the same stats as a 44 Magnum, but obviously you're going to get double the mag capacity. And the rate of fire is a little bit slower, to be honest, so it's kind of interesting how it works. You'll actually see it as we uh, get into some gameplay here, but what you'll find with the upgrades is they're basically the same. Starting off with the ball barrels, obviously that's going to get us better range and accuracy, as well as hip fire accuracy, which is decent. And we're going to go for advanced receivers for the best damage. And when we zoom in, we can change how far we zoom in. Let's go for 1.5 times, because... Generally, hip fire is good enough to deal with anything at super close range, but if we want to reach out a little bit, it'll be easier to hit targets with an extra 1.5 times on the old zoom thing. And you can have some uh, legendary effects if you want it. And just like the um, snub nose single magnum here, if I chuck that up to an advanced receiver, so basically same damage. So. Is it worth using this way? We'll find out. And again, if you want these things, what you need to do is uh, get two 44 Magnums in and of itself, because this is technically a separate weapon, a separate standalone weapon, just in a different form. But if you happen to pick up two random 44 Magnums, you'll go to a chemistry station. There'll be a section there for you to merge them into a dual 44 Magnum. So that's how you get these things. And, you know, they're easy to find in the vanilla game. If you have a hard time, if you have a hard time trying to find them, then that's your problem, mate. Righto, since the attachments were fairly basic, let's go over the functionality of these things. And there's the cool drawing and animations there. Very nice. And the reload animation is like this. Yep, pretty good. And when you fire it, it fires this fast. Which is ever so slowly than we will rock you by Queen. So that is very, very unfortunate. And uh, we'll just quickly reload this thing again, because when you aim down sights, you use exactly one of them, just like the Juga mod, and I've got that extra zoom in there. And, yeah, that's pretty slow. We're only using one hand here to fire the 44 Magnum, so I guess it makes sense why it might be slower. But even if you use all six from the cylinder, you can keep on firing this one. It doesn't miraculously switch to the other one to fire that one instead which is a real shame but it'd be cool if we'd do that but again this sort of uh dual wielding style is kind of in a, its infancy in terms of its implementation in fallout 4 and i'm guessing some heavy scripting stuff will have to happen to make that actually worth it in third person you kind of hold these like a rifle and you kind of just chicken wing it like that and if you do fire it in third person you'll notice that yeah if you fire a 44 magnum with a wrist on that angle uh, that wrist ain't gonna be around for very long so yeah the animations i think can be improved a little bit in terms of third person but the first person ones are great and other than the uh, gripe of having this thing with a double magazine size because you know of am animation limitations there's a couple of things that can be improved here but all in all it's a fairly decent weapon system but how does it perform in actual combat also here are the bash animations <sighs> Yep, and in third person, standard two-handed rifle bash. Okay, so here we are in Gunners Plaza in a beautiful sunset orangey glow. Another side note, this thing is not super compatible with classic holstered weapons that they developed for the uh, Fallout 4 New Vegas mod because it uses the same model as it does when you're looking at it through the uh, preview transform here. Yeah, you're going to have just a, a, a revolver floating in the middle of space, so potentially unimmersive and incompatible but that's up to you huh? anyways we'll get started with this 44 magnum showdown and as you can tell the rate of fire on this thing isn't blazingly fast in fact i would say that it's probably really slow which does not help when your targets are dancing and jumping around like they do we're gonna stand here because we're slightly more tanky when we're doing this and we have a chance to disarm actually but yeah, I'm not really digging this rate of fire, so I don't know, maybe there's some other re redeeming factors about this, because the half damage penalty that I'm getting here makes this an incredibly impotent weapon versus the uh, higher level gunners. Basic level gunners like this fella over here shouldn't have too much problems. I'm having trouble with getting bash kills with this thing too, but... Yeah, can't really show off the uh, bash animations if I'm not actually doing them. We're just going for a takedown move here. But yeah, 
we'll go ahead and just zoom into these guys because we've got that extra zoom in so we might as well try to zero in to the head but that again that rate of fire is not helping whatsoever i think that was a headshot Ah, screw it. Probably want to use this thing with VATS. That's so much faster. Using this thing as a VATS exclusive weapon seems to be the way to go. And if you get a critical... Yeah, that seems to stack on the damage pretty damn fast. So this will probably be a VATS only video because... I mean... Just two-shotting them. All it takes is a critical. And I've got many of those. And I can keep getting many of those provided I use VATS more. So, yep. That's it is, which I guess is fine for a revolver type weapon. Generally, they are, you know, good for getting those that's criticals because their slow rate of fire and everything, although it's potentially good for style points, they're not exactly practical. Look, these were invented during the 18 goddamn hundreds where, you know, weapons like that one didn't exist. That, I mean, the, the weapons, like energy weapons still don't exist, but automatic rifles like that fellow is holding. That is a particularly ugly um, example of an automatic weapon, but you know. So, I guess the functionality of revolvers, they're kind of showing their age. So, it makes it a little bit easier when you can get the game to aim for you, and all you have to do is manage criticals and your AP, which is going to be super easy if you've got high agility. Obviously, agility being uh, AP being a function of your agility makes it good. And there's that secondary shot. You may as well just try to finish him off with hip fire instead of wasting some more AP on that guy. That person seems to be. Oh, you're over there. I thought you'd phase through the ground. Not today, though. There we go. There's another one going down. Looks like we get some gun fuel action here, which is basically what re revolvers are made for, I think. Especially since you consider that the, um, the revolvers themselves. Um, they're literally on the gun boo thing, I'm sure of it. There we go. So, I don't know, slightly underwhelming. I just think it's the uh, animation speed that's really showing it, slowing it down a little bit. On balance, I'm thinking that the Juga pistols were slightly better performing, but the functionality of this weapon does make it feel slightly better. There's a cheeky little level up there to regain our health. We'll try to hip fire this guy. It is rather unfortunate that you can't make them double action so you can fire as fast as you can pull the trigger. Um, obviously, the uh, balancing factor there would be you'd have to control the recoil at the same time, which would potentially be slightly difficult. So, you know, maybe there's something for the mod author to think about in terms of giving this thing a little bit of kick in end game, very hard difficulty things where things are a little bit more spongy than normal. Let's move on. Righto, knowing that this thing is at its most powerful when utilizing its VAT synergy, let's go ahead and see what we can do versus this giant Wendigo looking creature, man. You need to go down, my friend. So we're going to be spamming criticals as much as we can, and an extra 1500 damage at the start, or rather 1000 damage because that second shot wasn't a sneak critical. But there we go, concentrated fire giving us a slight more bonus now. And it seems to be doing fairly decently, but, you know, not, not everyone's going to be wanting to use VATS all the time. Some people really object to it, but I think it's a good system. For reasons that have been explained better, which I won't go through here. And now we're in danger, which means it's time to execute the dance moves and hopefully get ourselves a chance to regenerate the AP. So, I mean, we're kind of sprinting and wasting it, but that's fine. Alright, he's coming in once again, so we'll just shoot him. Go for some criticals here. Hitting him for 669, which is funny. It's got 69 in it. And, ooh, when you transition to a aim down sights thing, in VATS, you'll just fire the one round. So, yeah, potentially don't let them in front of you. And that was, I think... Ooh, he's just activated Nerd Rage. Now, if I could just, uh... If I could just hide in here for a little bit, we'll get Nerd Rage active after we've done our run in VATS, I suppose. There we go. There we go. Come on, there we go. Yep, so we got saved by the Unstoppables magazine. That's a 5% chance to avoid damage that gives you. And you know what? I'm just gonna swim again and... Ooh, I'm, I'm walking underwater. 
Okay, Todd Howard. I'm still pulled by the current, though. That's kind of weird. But, yes, um... What was I on about? So, we, yeah, we avoided that damage 5%, then we happened to get hit with, uh... With Nerd Rage. Actually, should I... What I might do is crit this guy. Hopefully, we'll get some more criticals out of it with, uh... Grim Reaper Sprint. Probably didn't. But then I, I used, um... Aqua Girl rank 2 to get myself back into hidden, and he was distracted on some insects there, so took advantage of that. It's all planned, or, or rather, not planned. Like, make it up as I go along. What's that called? <laughs> Improvising. That's what it is. And we happen to get a idiot savant prank the proc there. There's something... I think there's a ghoul down there. The ghoul's buried in sand. I guess... I guess that's the Anakin Skywalker ghoul. He's just gone to hell. Anyways, what did you have for me? Because some people might be interested. Troubleshooters do 44 Magnum, so confirmation that you can pick them up as legendary weapons as well. Very, very nice. Righto, let's finish this off with a little bit of good old-fashioned reloading, first of all. But, good old-fashioned Super Mutant Warlord killing. Now, these guys are a giant pain in the ass in this game, simply because they're just so goddamn tanky. Um, nice T-pose, by the way. My second revolver jammed for a second then. Um, that the way of, like, at my level, at like 124-ish, these guys actually do have more health than Super Mutant Behemoths at this point. And they're somewhat more dangerous, I guess. They've got rifles, they've got proper range weapons. Although, the, uh, the Swan has uh, range weapons, I guess. And that's an extra three times multiplier. But luckily for me, these guys don't dance around like human enemies, so they're actually quite easy to hit. A lot easier. Like, by a factor of at least three times easier. Because look at this guy. He gets shot in the head and he just wipes the sweat off his brow. You right, mate? Did we just get a full mag dump on that fellow and it didn't kill him? Yeah. Probably not the fault of this weapon, just the, uh... Bethesda's difficulty design, which they've... Oh, God, what do they do? <laughs> they did it in Fallout 76 tenfold. Not only are they our things really tanky, you just get no... You know what? I'm gonna... I'm just gonna stop. Go for a critical there. There we go. 725 damage, and... Walter White shows up. And doesn't do much. <laughs> That's been a habit, actually. The Mysterious Stranger's been quite useless recently. There we go. And a quick little money shot as well. Quickly get that reload happening. And who's above me? I don't know. Oh, wait. Of course they're above me. Yeah, I usually clear out those guys first. And ooh. Okay. Recall's a bit strong in that one. Just had to... Weird. I think that's a trick that speedrunners use sometimes to rapidly go somewhere. Come on, penetrator perk, do your thing. Never mind, we're just spamming criticals now. Well, don't stop, come on. Ah, oh, we gotta go through a reload animation. That's all good. I still owed half a critical here. Ah, I didn't get it. That's fine, this guy should be killed at a couple of bullets. Good old pneumatic chest pieces. I gotta, I gotta get super staggered on that turn. I know. I know, alright. Just just let me Alright. This is this is getting a little bit ridiculous. So pending this particular gameplay, I don't think I wanna be keeping this thing around simply because there's just better options out there. Although the mod itself is lightweight and its functionality is good. I just think the Juga pistols are slightly better because a, you can suppress them, and B, you don't have to stick with a, a good awful rate of fire, which can sometimes easily be wasted on dancing enemies in front of your face. If you're playing on slightly less bullshit difficulties, then, uh, yeah, you could have a lot more fun with this. Especially on survival, you could potentially go pretty far with this, because the revolvers themselves, they are hit hard, and they're fairly lightweight for what they are, so there's always an advantage in using these things as is, but honestly, this is dragged on for too long at this section, so we'll try to just blast them with as many criticals as we can, try to maximize our kill time. Where's the other bullet? There it is. So that's 
like 1100 for a critical there, which is so much more than I could possibly get when aiming with this thing. Like, what's that? 206 times 2? So, we went from 412 to 1500. So, yeah, there's no reason not to use this thing in bats all the time. And especially since you notice that rate of fire difference, too. It's, it's kind of massive. Anyways, we're almost done here. I won't bother clearing out the Rad Roach room or the, the sporting the two doggos. This will be... Oh, little baby super mutant. Poor guy. Didn't even have a chance to grow up into a warlord. Anyways, there you go. That was the... Uh, Dual 44 Magnums. He could have worn a helmet at least, Mr. Super Mutant. And it was decent. The um, mod functionality here is great, but it's just not performing. And that's probably the fault of using the uh, the vanilla 44 Magnums as a baseline. Because if you're not using bass with these things, they do tend to fall behind at an end game level. After, well, when you're in playing in very hard difficulty. They get taken over by the Western Revolver if you've got the Nuka World DLC pretty quickly. So... The performance could be better, but not really the fault of the mod author. But all in all, a pretty decent mod. If you'd like to see this thing in your game, check out the description. I'll have a link down there. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Also, there's a loot crate link too.